We're at the beginning of a massive solar flare at the moment. Powerful bursts of radiation from the sun uh, that have significant impacts on Earth. And this has been going on throughout history. The solar eruptions often lead to geomagnetic storms affecting technology, navigation systems, even everyday life. And probably the most famous solar flare uh, recorded in history is the Carrington event in 1859, which was caused by an intense solar flare and coronal mass ejection, and it hit Earth on around September the 1st or the 2nd in 1859, resulting in widespread geomagnetic disturbances. Telegraph systems, which had really only just started uh, across Europe and North America, were severely disrupted, with some operators experiencing electric shocks, equipment catching fire, and the auroras produced were visible as far south as the Caribbean. If an event of this magnitude occurred today, it would probably cripple global electrical grids, satellite communications, and internet systems around the world. In March 1989, there was a solar storm, which led to the most notable modern consequence of solar, of solar space weather. On March 16th, a geomagnetic storm caused a um, coronal mass ejection, which struck Earth, resulting in a nine-hour blackout across the entire province of Quebec in Canada. And this was due to the collapse of the Hydro-Quebec's power grid, affecting millions of people. Satellites also experienced issues with some malfunctioning or temporarily losing contact. And the storm showed the vulnerability of modern electrical systems to solar activity. And of course now, almost everything is interconnected with modern uh, satellite systems. We can't do anything without that. And we seem to be, we, we, we seem to move so far away from, uh, you, you know, clockwork and basic mechanisms. We are so dependent. In, uh, there, there were the Halloween solar storms in 2003, a series of powerful solar flares which triggered a series of uh, geomagnetic storms dubbed the Halloween storms and the period saw uh, technological disruptions including satellite malfunctions, GPS inaccuracies, uh, airlines had to reroute their flights to avoid high latitude routes where exposure to increased radiation was higher and these storms serve as a reminder of the cascading effects of solar flares. Uh, the, in February uh, 2022, there was a solar flare. In October 2024, that's now, there's another one. And this is uh, Sunspot AR3842, which has released an X7.1 class flare, one of the strongest. And it was accompanied by a coronal mass ejection, which is expected to hit Earth this weekend, triggering a G3 class geomagnetic storm. Such storms, while not as powerful as G4 or G5, uh, will disrupt power grids, satellite communications, navigation systems. And additionally, radio blackouts have already been reported over, far, over parts of the Pacific Ocean, including Hawaii, um, because of this flare. Uh, the consequences generally are blackouts, power grids, satellite disruption, auroras, and air traffic. So while auroras can be stunning to behold, as for example in 2003 in the Halloween storms, they're often accompanied by radiation levels that force airlines to alter flight paths, especially those over polar regions. And, and, and finally, radio and GPS failures um, high-frequency radio communications and GPS systems, which many sectors rely on, from, ADA, from aviation um, to, uh, to, to, to car pinpointing to military operations, all at risk of temporarily losing their signal. The October 2024 20, solar flare, which we're about to experience reminds us that we are vulnerable to the unpredictable nature of space weather.
As reliance on technology grows, so too does our exposure to the risks posed by geomagnetic storms. And the Carrington event and the 1989 Quebec blackout are stark reminders of what could happen and ongoing research into solar forecasting and grid hardening is essential to ensure that that we aren't uh, our systems are not further compromised by um, solar activity. So, uh, so, so we need to be on our guard this weekend.